I saw something in the news last week that Apple Music had its first song with over a billion plays, which was The Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. And I thought, it's kind of weird. Because Spotify and YouTube have many songs over a billion plays. And I looked it up. They each have over 400 songs with over a billion plays. And I thought, well, Apple Music's been around since 2015. Spotify's been around since 2008. And YouTube since 2005, 2006. So it's it's not that surprising. So then I thought, well, why don't I download the API, which is the information available for developers from Spotify, because they give it to you. And it shows you a list of the top 500 artists. It shows you how many monthly listeners they have. A monthly listener is someone that's listened within the last 28 days. And a listen is constituted by 30 seconds of listening to a song. Okay, let's take a look at the demographics from Spotify. Age 18 to 24 is 26%. Age 25 to 34 is 29%. 35 to 44, 16%. 45 to 54 is 11%. And 55 and over, my demographic, is 19%. That means 54% of Spotify listens are between 18 and 34, and the rest, 46%, are between 35 and 100, let's say. Okay, what about the gender demographics? 56% are female on Spotify and 44% are male. YouTube skews a little bit more male, I think. I'm not positive of that, but it, but if I had to guess, that's what it would be. Okay, so what are the top artists by monthly listeners? Remember, it's people that have listened in the last 28 days. Okay, number one on the list is The Weeknd with 108 million monthly listeners. That's not surprising. What's surprising is Ed Sheeran is number two at 86 million. And what's surprising about that is The Weeknd is 20% higher than Ed Sheeran in monthly listeners. That's a lot. If you take into account that the, that 22 million difference between the two is would put you on the charts at about 230 or so on that chart of monthly listeners. So 22 million more is almost as many monthly listeners as the Beatles have. The difference between one and two. That's shocking. Then you have Taylor Swift, Miley Cyrus, Rihanna, Justin Bieber, Shakira, Ariana Grande, David Guetta, and Bad Bunny to round out the top 10. Number 10, Bad Bunny has 71 million monthly listeners. Okay, pretty interesting. Then I decided to divide this up into genre. So I took the top 40 artists, uh, number 40 being Carol G. Okay, so on this chart, as you can see, 45% of them are pop artists. 30% are rap artists. Then coming in at 7.5% are both EDM and pop rock artists. We'll talk about this in a second. 5% are R&B and 5% are Latin pop. Okay, so which artists are which? What are the rock pop artists? So the first one that came up is Coldplay at 14 with 65 million monthly listeners. They're a pop rock band. They used to be a rock band. They're a pop rock band now. And then Imagine Dragons, number 18, and Maroon 5 at number 26. Those are the only things that resemble rock at all, and they're really not rock. They're rock pop if you were to say. Latin pop are a couple different people here. You have uh, Jay Belvin at... Uh, at number 34 and Carol G at number 40. They're Latin pop. Uh, I guess you could say Shakira is, I would say Shakira is really pop. And then I created a chart as to when they released their first record or when they came to prominence. And this is kind of interesting. 57.6% were from 2010 to 2020. 37.4% were from the year 2000 on and 5% were from 1990 on. The only people that came up in the 1990s that were in the top 40 are Eminem and Shakira. Those are the only people. The really interesting thing is that no one from the last three years is on this. Okay, so where are the big TikTokers on here? You hear how TikTok drives the music industry, drives Spotify playlists, drives this, drives that. It's the only place you can make money is by having a viral video on TikTok. Well, there is no TikTokers in the top 40 in the charts on Spotify. If you keep going down the list, eventually at 85, you hit Ice Spice. It really broke on TikTok. And then you go down a little further and you hit uh, Pink Panthers at 95. But to find somebody that really broke big on TikTok, just right on TikTok, nowhere else, and it's Jake. Now, Jake has 30,763,000 monthly listeners. And he's 119 on the Spotify charts. Well, you know what 120 is? The Beatles. It's unbelievable. The Beatles are 120. They're, they're below Jake. 
Okay. Okay, so where are the rock artists, you might say? Okay, well, if you go into the 40s, you find Elton John, and then a little bit below Elton John is Queen. I've talked about Queen and Elton John having huge multi-generational listeners, right, that, they, that are young. My kids know who both of them are, and they listen to them. And then obviously people my age listen to them, which makes sense. That's why they have so many monthly listeners, because you have to have young people in there, because, you know, Spotify, half the people are 35 and under that listen to Spotify. So that, that, that makes sense that these are multi-generational artists. Where's the first metal act? Linkin Park, really, is way down at 82 with 35 million monthly listeners. That's a lot of monthly listeners, but that's your first metal band on there. So metal does not really occupy that many spaces on this list. Then you get Metallica much, much lower. So then you might say, where are the Foo Fighters on here? Well, the Foo Fighters are down at 20 million monthly listeners, and they're way down at number 253, and number 252 are the Killers. So rock music is just not that big, on this whole chart. And then you might say, well, that's because the charts on Spotify, you know, the people that are at the top of the charts get the most listens because they're the front leading people on the format, which is true. So if rock bands had bigger songs, they would be more at the top of the charts. Okay, well then how do they get bigger songs if they're not at the top of the charts, right? Because the rock playlists have many, have a much smaller share of the market. So you really can't break into this thing. It's very difficult. Another glaring thing to me is the fact that it's going to be very difficult for AI artists to break in. Now, I just made this video where I said that AI artists are going to be able to to be developed by record labels and by streaming platforms like Apple Music and Spotify. But it's not going to be that easy if you look at this list. Why? Because it took years for these artists to get at the top of the platform. Ed Sheeran, even The Weeknd, Taylor Swift, these people have been around for a long time. They really have. Miley Cyrus, they, I mean, a long time. Justin Bieber, they've been around forever. They need to develop live followings. They need to be real people to interact with their fans. And that's the one thing about AI artists is that they're not going to be able to really interact with their fans, at least on the human level. So for all the people that are worried about AI taking over, I think this list is pretty telling. That doesn't mean that AI artists can't come in because the pop, pop music is easiest to be mimicked by AI. But I wouldn't be too worried about it if I were an artist out today. There's other areas that I would be way more worried with than in the music sphere. I found this incredibly interesting and I thought you might. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching.